bites and make the most of it. So we got an area where there's a little bit more grass. Way bigger when it first flew up, hit so hard. We let this fish go real quick. We got a warm day. I think next week it's getting ready to cool off, so we're just kind of taking advantage of this warm weather that we have going on right now. And there's no better way to catch them than on a frog. So most of the country is cooling off right now. We've been lucky to have some warmer weather, so just trying to make the most out of it. Just kind of came out here for a little afternoon after work and just thought we might be able to put together a little video for you guys. So it's a fun way to start a fall video right there on a frog. Dude, oh, on yeah. a frog in October, can't complain. Nope. Oh, I got my heart pumping. That was good, dude. <laughs> so, well, it seems like uh, the bite might be turning on here. So we got limited sunlight right now, so I'm gonna stop yapping and we're gonna start fishing and hopefully we can put a few more in the boat for you guys. So basically what we got going on right now is we're out of the summer and we're transitioning into the fall and we got a bunch of bait fish that are making their way to the bank. So in our particular situation, we got tilapia, we got bluegill, we got shad all up into the tules, all up into this grass here. And we're just kind of working this tule line here and we're looking for a mixture of rock, grass, some depth in the tules. Uh, it seems to be kind of the key. So far we've gotten two bites. It's still a little early to say exactly what's going on, but that's kind of the pattern that we're playing on. We don't have a ton of time, so we're just kind of burning bank quick with the frog, making accurate pitches into these little holes. Uh, I got the honker tied on right now. Ben's been alternating between the honker and the sharker, which are two baits that are perfect for just target sniper casting into these target zones. And uh, they're definitely wanting to be in these shady pockets, so the baits are perfect for throwing in the, that type of situation. So for right now, we're just gonna burn bank and see if we can keep putting it together, but so far it seems like we're putting together a slight pattern. Oh, that's a good one. Oh my god. You got her? Yeah. Get her in here, let's go. Dude. Woo! Oh my god, it choked that thing, bro. That's what I'm talking about yes. right there. Woo! Oh my gosh. Dude, it choked that you thing. You think it wanted that? Honker, baby. Dude. Oh. Yes. Hell yeah. Oh my gosh. Fucking A. So disgusting. On the new prototype rod, too. <sighs> yes. Oh. Goody. Oh. All right, guys, so there you go. There's fish number two on the honker. CJ started off. Boom, with a bang. Honker is a dope one if you have no idea what's going on. CJ and I literally just came back from Japan, had an afternoon off, figured it's warm. Let's run out. When they get it, they get it. That is a stud. So let's keep going. Woo. grass for a minute. Honker, sunset. Sick! Hell yeah, dude. So dope. Oh, pinned it. Alright, guys, so CJ and I, as CJ mentioned in the beginning of this video, we had a couple hours to kill, and, and one of the cool things about fall is, you know, it's really a true transitional time where fish go deep, fish go shallow. 
but wherever you are, whether it's cold or whether it's hot, I mean, you can see we're in shorts and t-shirts today, even though it's, you know, fall, it's all about the bait, right? So if you find the bait, you're gonna find the fish. And one of the cool things about the fall is even when the fish are offshore, we're fishing a lake today that really has been pretty good offshore. When you get a warmer afternoon, that bait slips up, the fish will slip up with it. And it's just a great chance to get out and kind of get a couple more power fishing days in. If you guys are fishing ponds or down south or, you know, uh, anywhere where shallow water abides, you can power fish right through the winter, right through the fall. You know, just because it starts getting cold doesn't mean you gotta get a little finesse rod out. So uh, today we didn't intend to come out here and make a honker frog video. We came out just to kind of play around and mess around and see what the day gave us. As it turned out, CJ got bit on the honker really quick and we just kind of stuck with it and we got a few really good bites. So. One of the reasons why the honker is sick, I would say that the honker is without question my favorite all around frog. And, and the reason for that is it's probably the most versatile frog. The way we are fishing it today was more target oriented with small little pops of the wrist and literally kind of the same thing that you would do as you walk a frog where you're basically just kind of flexing this back finger. It's all we're kind of doing with the frog and what's happening is it's making those blades spin and clack and it creates just a little different sound than like a true popper, where a popper might be kind of like a boom, like this kind of bassy, deep sound. With the honker, it's more of like a splish, splish. So it almost sounds like a bait fish kind of feeding, a bluegill popping on the surface. It's just a great way to effectively fish isolated targets. Now, the other thing that's cool about the honker is that when it comes away from the cover, you just tighten up your cadence and it walks great. You can do a straight retrieve and it works as kind of like a buzz frog on the top. So if you're gonna have one frog in your arsenal, a honker is a really tough one to beat. Uh, as far as gear goes, I'm using a new prototype rod that Legit Design is actually working with myself and Hideki on uh, to do a new Tekel frog rod. So stay tuned on that. Uh, hopefully we'll have them this spring. This is kind of one of the final revisions and it was sick. It's a 6.8 heavy, it's super dope. I'll talk more when it comes out. CJ is also testing a new frog rod. What rod do you have today? So I got the Raid Gladiator Maximum Power the Max. So it's interesting because it's got a solid core tip on it, which I was... Yeah, isn't normally about. a frog thing, but we wanted to, you know, the fun thing about coming out in the afternoon for us is putting some of this gear to the test, testing it out, trying it so that we really know uh, what works, what doesn't work. So when you guys have questions, we can actually give you uh, correct information. Real wise, I'm throwing a Steeze A, eight to one. Uh, he's probably throwing something similar. Yep. 65 pound braid. I've got J Braid Grand on. Same. Same, so uh, J Braid Grand by Daiwa is a great like standard line. Okay, it's made by YGK, it's inexpensive, it comes in all kinds of sizes and colors. So if you're ever wondering like, oh, there's so many freaking braids, what do I get? If you stay with J Braid Grand, you're gonna be pretty solid. I like 65 pound because it casts the best for a frog. Okay, if you go too light, if you go much lighter than 65, it'll start digging in your spool. So 65 is kind of the magic size. Uh, as far as what we're doing, you've been watching it, we're just running shallows. We're running areas where fish can pull up uh, you know, from deep to shallow, tool edges, little grass pockets, uh, just trying to survive some of the wakeboards that are also taking advantage of the uh, beautiful warm fall afternoon. But, you know, take advantage, guys. If you guys are in an area where you get warm afternoons and you chose wisely, you didn't choose to live somewhere that's covered in ice and snow and disgusting, uh, take advantage. If you get these great days, you can come out, sneak away for a couple hours, try throwing the honker frog, I think you'll be really surprised what it can do even late into the season. So, Callan, good hanging with you. CJ, good hanging with you. Good work. All right, until next time, guys, peace.